Aside from spending after spending, what do you do with the money? Do you spend them well? We usually spend our money and income simply because we earned them. We say I worked hard for this. I work hard, so I deserve to shop hard and go to parties left and right. But what happens to you after all the glamour? What if you have an unexpected need? Where would you go? Where can you get help? It's you and you alone. You can't bother others because you don't manage your money well. However, if you want to change that and are struggling with the hows and whys, this video is here to help you based on Dave Ramsey's view about money. Dave Ramsey is a fantastic speaker and financial advisor. Do you know that he has established his financial principles in the Bible? By the way, he is a Christian, unashamed, and bold in his faith. Dave Ramsey was invited to speak at a church to share what the Bible says about managing finances. He believes that this works. These are the five things that you should do with your money. Number one, have a written plan. Dave Ramsey started with this. The first thing is you get on a written plan. We call it a budget in the financial world. Have you ever worried that you wouldn't have enough money for your next pay period as the month ended? Many people experience the feeling of having more monthly bills than money each day. Budgeting, thankfully, offers a fix for this issue. In Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 30, Jesus instructs his disciples and mentions the value of creating a budget. Don't build a tower without first counting the cost. My friend Zig Ziglar used to say, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Don't build a tower without first counting the cost. My friend Zig Ziglar used to say, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Being unable to pay for necessities by the end of the month is comparable to starting to build a tower, but being unable to finish due to lack of funds. That will only occur if you sit down first and total the expenses by creating a budget before each month starts. Budgeting isn't always enjoyable, we get that, but you will see how it works its wonders because with written budgeting, you get to see where your money has gone. If you want to handle money wisely and according to God's ways, you must invest the time and effort necessary to create a plan and give every dollar you earn a job before the month even starts. Number two, avoid debt. Ramsey has mentioned this many times and emphasizes how important it is to avoid debts. The second thing is you need to get out of debt. Scripture makes one abundantly clear. Borrowing money is a bad idea even though it doesn't necessarily teach that debt is a sin. But here's the deal. The borrower really is slave to the lender. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, NIV states, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The Bible forewarns against incurring debt because debt is so overwhelming that it drowns you and enslaves you. Some people also borrow money to pay debts after debts and it's never going to end. That mindset can quickly turn deadly if you aren't careful. Number 3. Foster High Quality Relationships This is just crazy. The third one surprises people, and that's foster high quality relationships. Fostering a good relationship is like investing in a good relationship too. If you want to change and the environment does not cooperate, you may have to change the setting and the people around you. If they cannot help you change for the better, you may not be in the right company. Be not deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. The Bible says, be not deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Did you know you become who you hang around with? So this is also biblical, just like the saying, birds of the same feather flock together. If you are in the circle of great spenders without a plan, the possibility is high that you are also one of them. To learn a lot, make friends, or be in a circle you can learn from. If you want to study hard, surround yourself with people who persevere at school. So if you want to discipline yourself in managing your expenses, surround yourself with people who are good at managing their expenses. Be not deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. So hang out with generous people and you will be generous people. Hang out with people who read the Bible, you'll end up reading the Bible. You can't keep yourself from doing it. Number four, invest and save. See, if you don't have any payments and you got a plan, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is save and invest. When creating your budget, you must consider expenses beyond those for today and the following month. It would be best if you also consider the future. 
living on less than you earn will allow you to have extra cash for savings. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil. And the rest of that proverb says, and a foolish man devours all he has. We know saving money is difficult. Yet, if you can't keep your spending under control enough to have money left over at the end of the month, you'll end up struggling. If you spend everything you make, biblically speaking, you're a fool. I didn't say it, God did, don't get mad at me. You must be disciplined enough to keep to your spending plan to avoid becoming like the foolish man who devours everything he has. It may be extremely difficult at first, but discipline will make it completely worthwhile in the long run. Continue making investments and strategies and having a track record. You can increase your fortune by repeatedly engaging in those actions. Through saving and investing, you could also leave something for your children and the generation to you. Number five, be outrageously generous. Be incredibly outrageously generous. It's hard to be generous when you're broke. You can be generous and smile and open the door for somebody. By the way, we do not simply save invest and accumulate riches so that we can hoard them or use them all for ourselves. The primary motivation for accumulating riches is to use them to practice extravagant generosity. God does not need us to practice generosity. That is an aspect of how He created us. We are wired to give. Consequently, each person should give as they intend in their hearts, not out of necessity or resentment. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7, NKJV, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. A giving person will thrive, and whoever refreshes others will also be refreshed, according to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, NIV. A generous person will prosper, and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. The financial plan in the Bible may appear straightforward, but it consistently works. It is time for us to take action and choose to do so. To others, Dave Ramsey is just so religious because he keeps relating his principles to Bible verses, but he wants the world to know that it works. It has worked for him and all those people who took his advice. He's a living testimony that God interferes with our finances if we let him, and he experienced this firsthand. So for those of you who are watching this right now, this might be your best shot. There's nothing wrong if you try, we can't wait to see you succeed with your finances. We wish you the best of luck. What do you think about this topic? Do you agree with me too? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.